Hello and welcome back to Bangladesh. I am now here in Silit in the northeast of the country. I am actually staying here on this road just a bit further down there. We're a little bit away from the city center so I'm going to probably jump on a cycle rickshaw after a short walk. To reach Silit here I took a bus with a company called Green Line. They are an excellent company doing some work on the road here. I used Green Line last time I was in Bangladesh. They did not disappoint me. They drive a bit safer. It's a little bit pricier than other bus companies, but they are one of the best. You get plenty of leg room and space. Some fish here, where locals are picking up from the side of the street. Yeah, beautiful. Looks good. Yeah, fresh. Yeah. To go from Dakar to Silit, I paid 1,500 taka, which I think works out to about 10 pounds. Hello. Interesting to soak up the vibe of the town here, a little outside of the center. The traffic, okay. the traffic getting out of Dakar was quite bad and in the end, the journey, I think it's supposed to take just over six hours. It took nine and a half to go from Dakar to Silit which wasn't the bus company's fault. There was a very congested part of the road we were stuck on for a good few hours. Just immediately outside of Dakar, I took a screenshot on my phone and you can see by that point, we've been on the road for three and a half hours and we barely sort of left on the way. Hello, uh, Panshi, Panshi, you know, restaurant, Panshi, yeah, okay. Even though Silla is the capital of this division or region, it has quite a laid back feeling to it. It's more of a small town feel. It doesn't feel as immersive as Dakar does, at least from my memory. And I'm sure we're gonna see that even six years on today. journey arrived and this friendly man is already showing me the entrance to Panshi the ultimate local restaurant here famous and probably heaving at lunchtime here Hi. although I'm a little bit late because it's around 2 p.m. this is the inside here tables just pick your spot and you'll be opposite a local Siletti and I've been told to try the quail biryani uh, by a friend and so here is the rice and then the dip or the sauce for the quail biryani and then this is a chicken leg roast on the side for a little bit of protein so let's get stuck in they have many dishes here at this restaurant curries with fish, chicken, uh, meat, uh, different soups as well. And there's a whole plethora of things on the menu and many of the things they do very well. This sauce on the side 
is to die for. It is very rich and meaty with a great flavor. This very kind gentleman opposite me has just uh, bought me a Coke. Thank you, Donabad. Welcome to Bangladesh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So just finished my lunch there in the famous Panshi restaurant. And, and so the quail biryani was really nice. I don't think I've ever eaten a quail before, which is the small bird. If you Google it, it's a very pretty bird. It makes me a little bit sad that I ate one, but at the same time, it's a local delicacy here. So now we're on the streets of downtown Silit. I seem to be getting a bit more attention here than in Dakar. Probably, as you know, few people really visit Bangladesh. And well, at least in Dakar, they are somewhat used to a lot of Westerners, and I guess they are here too in Silit, but just maybe a little bit less. Almost everyone in the restaurant uh, wanting to stop and talk to me, which is nice. It's really nice. It shows how friendly people are in every corner of the country. Lunchtime atmosphere of the city centre here. One of the main junctions in the center of the city. Well, we're gonna head down this way towards a famous shrine, Sufi shrine, belonging to a man who made his way here from Arabia. I believe he was from Mecca and helped bring Islam to Bengal and Silit. His name was Shah Jalal and this is one of the largest pilgrimage sites for Muslims in Bangladesh. Hello. Always vendors on the street making fuchka or different drinks sometimes. I just need to keep heading straight interesting fact about Silic, which you may not know, is that it has quite a connection with especially London. There are many Silities who have settled in the UK and then come back to Silic, invested in the local economy and ultimately bring cash from outside that they earned in London or in the UK back to their hometown and there's a really high percentage of good level English speakers in Silit because of the connection with London. I'm sure I'm gonna have a few comments on this video saying I'm a Sility who lives in the UK or who stayed in the UK for a number of years and if that's you let me know below. Approaching the shrine now, which is at the end of this street. And I'm not sure how they are with filming, so maybe I have to leave my camera or my phone behind before we go in the shrine. I am not sure. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Your country? Uh, England. England? Yes, England. Yeah, good. They seem to be okay with non-Muslims entering, but I will be careful with the filming here. I know there is a mosque on site, along with the shrine. Hello. Beautiful building.
What an amazing experience in the shrine there. I saw the shrine of Shah Jalal in there, the 14th century Sufi saint who helped bring Islam to the region. I turned off my camera because I wasn't sure on the filming of the actual sensitive part and I decided to just play it safe. I think if you want to visit for yourself, you will see the shrine with your own eyes. I took one shot in there of the building just opposite the shrine, just to give you an idea of what the interior looked like, although I didn't shoot the shrine itself. And so now I am back on the street. While I was in there, I got quite overwhelmed with attention. Many people asking me where I was from and a little crowd forming of very friendly, smiling locals interested about my religion and my visiting purposes. Now back in another rickshaw and it is rush hour now. I am heading to a well-known meeting spot in the city by the river, which I have a lot of memories from. I spent a lot of time there six years ago and I'm looking forward to taking in the sunset hour once uh, we arrive. I'll talk a little bit more about this special place in Silla. My sister and my niece lives in the UK. Okay, which part of the UK? It's London. Okay. It's London. Nice. It's quite funny how you can have conversations while in the traffic jam. A few people have been talking to me on this side and this side as we edge our way forward. I want to UK. Double masters. Education, double masters. So I'm now here by Keene Bridge, which is the main crossing across the river to enter the city. Many people go over it every morning and evening during the rush hour to go back to the South Bank where they may live and work on the city side here on the North Bank. I'm gonna... Are you Jason Dallon? Yeah, I am, yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice man there who remembers my videos from six years ago. <laughs> so let's take a walk over the bridge. I probably should have walked here. It would have been quicker. I asked the rickshaw guy to take me to Keene Bridge and he said yes yes and I said Keene Bridge he said yes so great <laughs> so then we started going during the rush hour but after a while I realized he's not going in the right direction and then the guy I was talking to in the traffic jam on the bicycle with the dark shirt the black shirt uh, okay. So I think he wanted to show me the building over there. <laughs> um, here we are, the historic bridge. Around the sunset time. And well, Actually, <laughs> the guy with the black shirt, I confirmed with him, this isn't the way to Keene Bridge. And he said, no, no, it's not. Let me talk to your driver. And he told the guy on the side of the street, you're going the wrong way. Take him to this bridge. 
he didn't seem to understand Keenbridge, so he showed him a picture on Google, <laughs> and then the guy understood where to take me. It's quite a beautiful view of the river and the settlements on the banks and the greenery. Something unique with Silla is the crossing every day that you see the masses of people going on foot to work or going home. When I was in Silla last time, I stayed on the south bank a bit further with a lovely guy called Uttam from a Hindu family and his mother who were just so friendly and incredibly hospitable to me. Memories I'll never forget. And I lost Uttam's contact. I couldn't find him before this trip. And so I had to ask a friend of a friend to track him down. I didn't have him on social media or any app like couch surfing. I didn't even have his phone number. I met him in the first place through someone on couch surfing who said you can stay with my friend because I can't host you. Anyway, I found out where Uttam is. Unfortunately, he's in India, so he's no longer here in Silip. It would have been so nice to meet him again and maybe I will try to track him down the next time I'm in India. I wonder how he's doing six years later. We went to Lala Kal together and we had very late dinners at his house. I remember eating on one night at 1 a.m. in the morning. He gave me his bed and he slept, I think, somewhere with his mother or one of his family members. They were just incredibly friendly. Here we are on the banks of the Surma River, the best view of Keen Bridge. The clock tower there, all built during the British era, although badly bombed during the Liberation War with Pakistan. And walking along here during sunset is a great way to soak in local life of people chilling out after work and also grab a chai, which I remember doing with a few friends back in 2018 here. It's kind of a good meeting spot in that sense. I got talking to a nice guy here who's just invited me for tea. So I'm gonna sit down with him by the bridge, which is something like I said you should do. You can have it, like you are roaming around here, so you want tea. Okay. You can have it from there, but not the best. But okay. actually it's good. Okay. I was just saying that the tea here is very sweet. Compared to the UK, we usually have just a little sugar or almost no sugar. We have but it's very nice, I like it. It's like a dessert for me. We, we have a lot of Warm sugar. dessert. <laughs> warm dessert. Yeah, a warm, warm dessert. dessert. <laughs> Okay, so after having my tea by the river there with those lovely people that I met, I am now just gonna finish off with some dinner here at the next most famous restaurant called Patch Bai. Hello, just one person. Hello, hello, Salam alaikum. It's called Dal Borta and it's a Shutki Borta. Okay, so they're all included when you order something with rice. Yes, you including rice and then you try Yeah, okay, cool. I was a bit unsure what to order here and then that friendly guy told me you should try the shakura, I think it's pronounced, which is the beef. Uh, he said it's a silly dish. And then he was explaining that you get bota with your meal. And there are so many different things here to try, along with the rice. This is to wash my hand. I suppose 
I better dig in. Trying the different waters here. Really nice. This one has a strong onion and chili flavor. Some kind of green leaves. And this one which has arrived. Shadkora. Beef. Beef, yes. Trying the shadkora. Curry is so rich. Really, really good. Nice and meaty. So just finished the meal and another char to end things. And this restaurant is kind of intense in the way that they gave me so many different dishes to try. Many of them were really spicy and in Bangladesh it's kind of good etiquette to finish your food, not to leave a grain of rice. You'll see lots of locals doing that. And my mouth was on fire and there were so many people staring at me eating. Just like three, four guys around ready to take any dish I'd finished. Watching me eat and then people on the other tables watching me eat <laughs> while my mouth was burning and feeling the pressure to finish all the dishes. I'm gonna end things here from Silit. I hope you enjoyed the video. Beautiful country. Yeah, very yes. beautiful. Yeah. You live in England? From the UK, yeah. You live in? Cambridge, UK. Italy. England. England, England. Yeah, England. England. Yeah. And I'd say hundreds of people have come up to me today to ask where I'm from, how am I, all these things, and even eating just now, a guy, came and sat opposite with about three or four of his friends and they were all asking me questions while I was eating. So anyway, I'm gonna end things here. So thank you for watching this video. I hope it gave you a good taste of Silit and I will see you on the next one. Cheers.